It's a nightmare of almost unimaginable consequences, rape or sexual assault. But then imagine on top of that having to wait months, even years, for justice. The same goes for a defendant, desperate to prove their innocence. For some, that wait is just too much. Throughout this piece, we'll be hearing from this woman, who says she's a rape victim. She says she attempted to take her own life after her case was delayed multiple times. It was the second delay that sent me over the edge because it had been 18 months-ish from arrest and then I just couldn't see a way forward. I thought twice I prepared to go to court and speak about things that you don't even want to think about, let alone speak about. And the mental preparation is horrendous. And then twice to know that you're going to have to do that again, or you don't know when it will be again, or if it will be delayed again, is it's like torture. It is another form of sort of abuse, really. New data obtained by Newsnight shows more than 1,600 rape and serious sexual assault cases have collapsed over five years after alleged victims have withdrawn their complaints. In these cases, the defendant had been charged. I think one of the major reasons that we're seeing people pulling out of, of rape and serious sexual offences prosecutions now is because of the impact of the delays. Um, we're looking at not just a year or two years, but sometimes four, five, six years for people um, to wait for their trial to go from initial complaint to conclusion of the criminal trial. And that's an extraordinarily long time for people to have this hanging over them and not being able to move on with their lives. The Criminal Bar Association and the Law Society agree, saying one of the reasons behind people dropping out is the delays in the system. The CBA says there are no longer enough barristers to prosecute and defend. I am not thinking about a date anymore because if I think about a date and I get that in my head, I can't mentally cope. So now, until it happens, I'm not going to even prepare for it to sort of happen because I don't believe it will happen really. It could be delayed again and again, or nobody knows. I don't have much confidence in the system in general, really. Newsnight analysis of the most recent data shows it took an average of almost five years for a rape case where a defendant is on bail to go from offence to completion. This is more than a year longer than it took five years ago, an increase of 30%. Some lawyers blame delays on funding cuts. Criminal barristers have given us various reasons for the delays, including a cap that was put on by the government on the number of days judges can work back in 2019. Then came the pandemic and all courts were closed. Even when they reopened, the smaller ones had to remain shut because of social distancing guidelines. Then we had the barristers' strikes. All of that, they say, has exacerbated an already stretched system. The woman we spoke to says complainants withdrawing their evidence could mean more perpetrators on the streets. You go to do what you think is for the greater good. You want to protect other women and you want to do the right thing and it doesn't happen. And it's, it's a really hard thing to get your head around that this is happening and it's happening to lots of different people. And that's why a lot of people either pull out or pull out further down the line because they can't cope with it. So there's a lot of people on the streets that shouldn't be there. There's currently a backlog of more than 60,000 cases. The government has a target of cutting that backlog to 53,000 by early 2025, which critics point out is a very modest target. Well, every trial for rape or for a serious sexual assault needs to be heard in front of a specialist judge, prosecuted by a specialist prosecutor and defended by a specialist advocate. So specialist rape courts in principle are a great idea. The real issue that we have throughout the criminal justice system, as always, is funding. And the funding, where the funding isn't available, it's difficult to see how these specialist rape courts can help to reduce the backlog when we haven't even got the facility to have these trials in ordinary courts as things stand. 
The government says it's delivering real improvements in the response to rape, including quadrupling funding for victim services, but admitted more needs to be done. It told us that last year alone the number of suspects charged has increased by 54%, and over 40% more cases are reaching court. Last year, a government watchdog report said that rape cases were still being listed as backers and floaters, meaning that they can be moved or rescheduled at the last minute. This caused outrage among some victim support groups. The legal system is there to provide justice. If it doesn't work efficiently, justice delayed is justice denied, potentially prolonging the suffering of both the defendant and complainant.